I thought that URL, so just copy that URL, Tiffany. Okay, cool. So we have the URL, everybody, we good? Can we continue? Can we continue? Okay, so the URL is coming from my repo. It's a Swift package, Swift packages we spoke about last week. It's a dependency. Um, it, fits in, it brings in code into your project. So that same project that we copied the folder from some other project, we grabbed it in. That Swift package, you have one URL, you're done. Right? There's no like searching for a project and all that stuff there to get the network helper we want. So we have the URL from that Swift package. We go next here. It verifies the Swift package. We tell Xcode that we want to only use versions. Keep the default. We click next. It resolves. We have image kit here. It's a library. We click finish. At this point, we have three packages. We have image kit which has our get image. Everybody remember get image from that extension. We have data persistence, which is the majority of unit four. And we have network helper, which was the majority of unit three. Okay? Um, great, so let's continue on here. And let's go back to our API client. So in our API client, the way we use that dependency, we simply say import network helper. We say import network helper. At this point, it's as if we have a network helper, well, we do have a network helper folder in our project. So that's the same network helper. If we go to network helper, if you're curious to see what the code looks like for network helper, or how it's changed or whatever, you go to network helper here, where it says Swift package dependencies, or SPM. Uh, we go down to sources, we go down to network helper, and we see the same app error and the same network helper we have. Like the same drag you would be doing there, that's the same thing you have. A network helper is the same network helper here, you are a session, all of that stuff. Awesome. Uh, so close that, minimize this, and close, close, close. You could even hide the folders if you, don't, if you want. You could simply say hide here, and it will hide the packages so it doesn't look too cluttered in your Xcode. Um, go back to dog API client, network helper, great. So let's continue on. Return is not enough. We need to have some sort of completion here, right? So let's go ahead and do that. It's a failure. And since we imported network helper, we also have our app errors. So here if we have a bad app error, we could simply say, uh, what am I? Do, 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 do. No, I don't. Just uh, network helper has it already. So here we have a bad, what's happening? Oh, sorry. Thank you, sir. Um, so importing network helper has app error as well. Why does it have it? Because app error is also public, right? Uh, cool, so let us do bad URL here. Thank you, sir. And our bad URL will simply return the endpoint URL string. Great. So let's continue on. So we have a good URL at this point. Let's go ahead and make a request. So we have a request object, which is of type URL request. And URL request takes in a URL. And Chelsea, this is what we pass. This request is what the URL session in Network Helper gets. Right? So at the end of the day, URL session is the one actually making that network request for us. Yeah. Uh, cool. So we have our request, great, great, great. Let's go ahead and call network helper dot shared, which is a singleton. Again, if you're uncomfortable with singletons, go back to the lesson, watch an article, whatever you need to do. But you need to be able to explain that if one of us say, hey, Luba, what is a singleton? Why do we use it? How do we use it? What makes a singleton a singleton? All those questions. Uh, cool, so we have our perform request here. Let me go back here. So perform request, I'm still working on this caching days here. So there's a way I'll have it to cache for a certain amount of days so that you're not making multiple network requests. But for now, we'll keep it the default. So perform request with request here, and completion is some result. Great, so this is what we have. We have our network helper that shared singleton, and we have our method called perform data task, which takes in a request. And our completion has a result, which is either an error or data. 
Again, our result here is a generic type. We have our angle brackets. We'll talk about generics again tomorrow. Cool, so continuing on, we'll switch on our result. We'll say case failure, let up error. If we have an error, we simply return that error, failure. App error. If we are successful, that means we got our data back and we need to create our object. So to do, create object, right? So to do, create model to parse to our, to parse JSON. All right, so we need to create a model here from our JSON data. So we need to take a tangent and come back. All right, let us type out. How are we doing? Done typing? Continue? Okay, so let's create a model here. Let's look at the JSON again. Okay, so let's create our model. We'll create a new file. Command, new file, Swift file, and I'll simply call this random dog info. Random dog info, create. Okay, so we have a random dog info struct, random dog info. What does it need to conform to if we decode in JSON? Okay, decodable. Decodable here, great, great, great. And what do we have? We have a let message. The API client, sure. You guys could continue building out the model. The, you got it? We're coming back to it, we're not done yet. Okay, so go back to our model here. In our JSON, we have one property, message, which has an array of images. So let's do that. It's a dictionary. It's an array of what? String. Awesome. Great. So that's all it is. It's an array of strings. I want to show us something else. Um, string doesn't really say what this is. Like, string could be whatever. For now, if you want to change a type's name throughout your code, you could use what's known as a type alias. So you could use a type alias here to give basically like a nickname or a next name to string, right? So what we'll do, we'll create some type alias here. It's going to be public to our entire app. And I'll simply call it dog. And the expression is string. And now I could say dog here. So anyway, in my project, I could refer to dog. And dog is basically a string. Everybody? Everybody? Any questions about that? It's a type alias. I call it dog because I don't want to refer to it as a string. Or I could even call it image. I could call it whatever I want. I could call it dog image. Maybe let's call it dog image, actually. Um, dog image. To make it have more meaning for somebody, so for somebody reading your code, like what's the string? What does string represent here? An array of string, what's the string? Like before the person says, what is string? They see dog image here, they know, okay, it's probably a dog image, some sort of dog image, okay? Or you could say dog image URL, if you wanna be even more spe uh, specific. So you see an array of dog image URL, okay? But we still use string as well. Yes, 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 exactly. So you could use them interchangeably there. Okay, uh, great, great, great. So we saw type alias today, and let's go, let's continue on. So let's go back to our API client, and let's do our to-do. 
So we start out with a do expression, and we have a catch for errors. So here we expect some sort of results, and we are trying to decode some JSON of type. It's a dictionary. Random dog info that self refers to the class itself. And here we have results. Right? Results is of type random dog info. And let's finish our completion for the success option here. So success, you see? So it's still expecting a string. Everybody sees that? It's not expecting dog image. Right? At the heart of it, it knows that's a string. It doesn't know about dog image. Right? We created this alias on top of string. All right, so here we could simply say return success here. Uh, what do we have? It expects results dot message here. You see, so as we did message, now it says dog image. You see that? Cool. So here we are good. Let's continue on. If we have an error, what error can we catch here? What possible error is this? Decoding error. Thank you so much. So here we have a failure, it's a decoding error, and we simply pass in the error. And we could update this string here to our alias name, dog image. Amini, I could update that string in the result type to not say string, to say my dog image alias. Right, so when I'm reading it, I know it's a dog image, an array of dog image. Cool, so everything builds correctly here, everybody, no errors, right? We all good so far? So far so good? Yep. Okay, great. So we have our API client, let's go to our view controller. Can I go to the view controller? What's that? Don't. Uh, we did, uh, we added one image to the cell. Oh, you mean like the configure image? Yeah. We could do that. Uh, so Cassandra says she wants to go finish the cell first. Let's go do that. So, what's that? <laughs> Let's go do the cell. So go to your dog cell, and Cassandra wants her public function configure cell. So configure cell with dog image. It expects some sort of dog image. Cool. So here, uh, what do we need to import here? We need to import image kit because image kit has our get image function. Everybody with me? We need to import image kit here. Image kit. Image kit has get image. That works with image kit has get image which is our extension on UI image view. Okay. Great. So what do we want to do here? We have our image. We have our dog image view. So we say dog image view here dot get image Again, later we'll be able to see that we could write to documents directory, right? But for now, we're using the default get image, right? So get image expects some string. We'll pass in dog image here. Completion is our result. And let's not forget to break any strong reference cycles with weak self here. And let's switch on our result. Case failure. <coughs> we'll add some default image on our dog image self dog image dot image equal to UI image system name. And here we simply pass in a default image. Great. 
And next up, we have our success, which is the image that we want. At this point, we will set that image on our image view. So here we have self dot dog image view dot image equal to our image. There's nothing else there. Yes, we could add a label, but there's no dog name on our API. So at base, at basic, we'll just, we just have one image, one image, and that's it. It will be a collection view of cells with dog images. Who am I? I got a wrong spell here? No, that's wrong. There you go. We're good. We're back to uh, spelling B here. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, how are we doing? Are we good? What time do we start? Are we breaking? We continuing? You for break? Okay. Um, so let's break, and then we'll come back at eleven twenty.